So good morning and welcome to Navigate. Special guest today is none other than John Cunningham. John, great to have you here. Thanks, Michael. Pleasure. Uh, John, there's a couple of things I want to actually just quickly share up front and then we'll get in and talk about how uh, Cunningham's as a business has navigated. And, and you know, you've seen a, a range of different markets over, over your real estate career and your involvement in real estate. It's going to be really awesome to start peeling back some of the layers and look at the strategies and the approach you've had to, to doing business and you put in place to be able to, um, you know, capitalize is the wrong word, but, but to navigate and see where the opportunities are to improve the way you do business and, and move things forward. So uh, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome to have you here. Thank you. Uh, so a couple of things to, uh, up front just to, to talk through. And I think John, this sets the scene as to, uh, a, a couple of things that, that I think you guys do at Cunningham's brilliantly well. So uh, as you know, Navigate's all about helping you navigate uncharted waters. What I will say, John, this is one of the metaphors that I know when I shared this ages ago, you loved it so much. And this is that, uh, that um, you know, Jenga blocks game. There's been a lot of businesses that have had parts of the Jenga in play, but parts out of play, and they've been able to get away with it without doing it. I'm suggesting now, and this is the time to, to ensure that you've got an incredibly fit and healthy Jenga blocks game. Uh, and as simple as that is, I think it's, a, it's an incredibly important. And in this navigation, what is the new direction of your business? Where are you going to head? And what does it actually look like to you? And John, in, in reflection mode, this is something that I've seen you do brilliantly well to your marketplace and also to your, your own team, your individual team and your clients. And that is if confidence is missing, people will not act. And giving them the confidence and the certainty and the level of clarity that, that hey, we can head in the right direction. So, so up front, I just wanted to set the scene that these are some things that, that I think uh, John, you do, you're doing incredibly well. Last Navigate, I talked about five leadership essentials. And I think if you can just have these in the back of your mind as John presents the things that, that he and the, other, the rest of the leadership team have done at, at Cunningham's, it'd be neat to see noticing how John and the team are putting these in place. So the first one is investing time in the future. So what are we doing now to actually set ourselves up for the future? Next is keep up your communication, the quality of the communication with the team and also to the marketplace. Uh, embracing deal support, helping our, our team, both from a property management point of view and a sales point of view, put deals together, navigate through it, have a look at the technology we're using and how can we improve the efficiencies of that. And the final one is the culture creators. So what are we doing to make sure we're, we're applying great culture in the process? So John, I just wanted to set the scene a little bit for, uh, for you up front. Um, the level of respect I've got for you and the Cunningham's business and the, and the team uh, is huge. And it is so great to have you here sharing some of those insights as to how you're going about navigating through this whole health and safety and economic issue. Great, looking forward to it. Yeah. So John, maybe just to start with, for those who, who don't know John Cunningham, could we just maybe do a little piece on, on, on you and the Cunningham's business and the market you're in? Sure. Yeah. Um, 43 years now, Michael, uh, I've been in this uh, wonderful industry. Um, started the business in 91, right in the middle of the recession. And uh, people said we were crazy, um, but we flew. We absolutely flew straight away. And all we did was take a different um, mindset into the marketplace. Um, so it's, again, it's an analogy for, for today. Um, so once that business started, uh, just myself and Anne in a little shop up, actually right next door to where we currently are um, in Balgala. And um, we just took a different mindset. We took a, an absolute customer first focus into the marketplace, um, having sort of uh, Anne's background as a school teacher and a, a different point of view of what we were heading. And she'd been actually working with me in business part time um, where I was working before. So she got a really good insight. It was like this helicopter view. Uh, so that enabled us to move forward into the business. We've, we've organically grown uh, to now uh, three offices, uh, I think about 65 people 
Um, 11 partners, that's probably one of the big points of difference with our business is that I, I uh, realized many years ago that, um, that we were far uh, stronger as a group um, than me individually being, being the captain coach leading try scorer, it doesn't work. Uh, it works for a certain amount of time, um, but then you've got to grow, let go to grow. Uh, and so that's what, what I decided to do. And we've been um, growing ever since uh, in many different ways. There's, there's, obviously there's lots of different ways to grow. Uh, we focus on growing all the team individually um, more than just throwing numbers at issues. I think that's come home to roost in this last uh, few months in terms of knowing, in fact, the last 12 months we've realized that it's, uh, it's again, not about throwing people at situations, it's actually solving them through technology systems, uh, automation um, and skill. Yeah, yeah. And so, look, you, you had a, uh, um, uh, a very strong stint within the REI New South Wales as president of REI New South Wales, and you've been a fantastic contributor to creating change beyond the Cunningham's business for the entire real estate profession and, and, and literally that shift to professionalism in, in what we do and how we operate. Yeah, 12 years on the board, two years as president, and uh, the, the journey's still going. Uh, in fact, I've got a, a, a meeting with, with the board at, later this afternoon just to go through a few things. But, you know, that sort of massive change in the industry doesn't happen overnight. And as you know, it's been a five-year journey so far. Um, it, it's going to be another five years. Uh, so, uh, but the fascinating thing is that you think of a, a, a massive leap to, ch to you know, shift the whole industry. COVID-19 has given us that opportunity in one hit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, John, we've got, uh, you know, in the Cunningham's business, a very, very strong sales business and a very strong property management business. And, and those two businesses obviously uh, work very, very well together and, and build some amazing momentum. Could we talk about a little bit about, you know, the, the approach? I mean, I think everyone sort of, if we look at, at, at heading into to this, love to get your sense of what your approach was and, and how you went about it. Uh, with the team and also with your leadership team? Yeah, look, we identified very early that, that there was uh, a freight train coming and, um, you know, how, how are we going to deal with that uh, situation? So uh, the realisation that, um, you know, we were, we were only slightly touched in Australia um, came very quickly, the fact that, you know, all you got to do is do the maths and, and you could figure it out. Um, so we responded fairly quickly. Um, we then looked at uh, how we would uh, manage our, our property management business, how we would manage our sales business as a result. And, and the linchpin to all of it was our ops department. Um, you know, how was that going to manage uh, those two areas in relation to admin, facilitation, all those things. So it was very important to, to put a plan in place very early um, and to, to look at one over. We went to working from home uh, very, very early. Um, and we, we then had the technology fortunately in place already. Um, and for us, it, it was, you know, as from some of the horror stories I've heard about, for us, it was fairly seamless. Uh, then we had to prepare ourselves for uh, the rental um, requests. Uh, that was something that we scripted up. We trained the team. We had that, that ready to roll. And we had an expectation of exactly what the numbers would look like. And interesting enough, it's pretty much turned out what we thought it would be. Um, so that, that meant that we were able to pre-frame stuff with our landlords much earlier than a lot of people. Uh, and in the sales environment, it was very much about um, making sure that we were working with the right people at the right time, um, but also being the educators, being the guides of people to go, you know, fear is about to strike most people and we have to be the steady hand that steers the ship. Um, so that was the approach we took into it and took it early. Yeah, and I, I, love, I love the fact you brought up the, the educators um, because when, when we see ourselves as, as the educators of the marketplace and, and, and being a thought leader uh, in, the, in the marketplace for our clients uh, and then the broader marketplace, I think it makes a, a, a big, big difference. Um, did you up your communication and, and you know, what's the learnings in that? Yeah, look, communication has been a, a good part of what we do. Um, but, you know, there's always improvement, you know. And, and again, this is an opportunity for improvement. Um, and some really interesting learnings have come out of that. The type of, the type of communication that we were having with the whole team um, uh, compared to what we were having with individual departments and individuals within that team. So that communication really got bro broken down into its small parts. Um, what's the communication strategy with the property management team? How are we going about um, you know, educating them to educate the marketplace. How do we, uh, um, what's the communication like to give them the confidence and to take away the fear 
um, of what's about to come. Uh, and the same in the sales environment. How are we actually working with each individual team um, and what's their strengths and weaknesses? Um, you know, you look at Andrew's team, for example. Andrew, the great adapter um, to a marketplace. Um, he, he'll, he'll, he'll read it quick, he'll adapt quickly to it um, and, and enable him to almost keep doing what he's always done, but it's, it, subtly it's changed. So there's interesting dynamics within each team and therefore it was working with each of those teams and each of the agents to make sure their place in the marketplace was still local, current and relevant. Um, so those things were, were critical. And then we looked at the, at the um, mediums of communication. How, how are we going to do that? Uh, and realised quickly that, it, that yes, there'd be broadcast to the whole team, but there were those nuances of each of the business, um, you know, operations, for example, an entirely different communication with, with them. The one thing that was really important to us all the way through was making sure people felt secure um, in, in their role. Um, we, we made a commitment to our team uh, very early on that um, rather than have fear take us over and what is the unknown down the line, um, one of the most important things for us was to keep this team together um, and for us to actually navigate this, this um, difficult time with strength um, and, um, and surety so people feel confident in what they're, what they're doing. Um, and that was an important message. And even though we've got super teams out to make a few, we only have to make a few small decisions along the way. Um, but that enabled everyone to get on and do their job. Um, albeit in a totally different environment, it gave them the, uh, the confidence because, you know, that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you think of, of that survival thing is the number one thing that, that motivates. If you've got to motivate out of that, you get into the strive mode, then you get thrive mode. So that was the, the, um, the philosophy that we took into it. Yeah. So would you say you, 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 um, I mean, a couple of things I love about this. Number one, guys, if you, if you, uh, were, were sort of like, um, taking the, the view, you had an overall communication strategy to say, so what's the messages we need to get out to everyone in the team, then chunk it down. What do the messages, the, the property management team, the sales team need, but then you actually went down one more and say, what does this individual person actually need? Uh, and um, was there any buddying up in that process? Yeah, look, there was there were some responsibilities that were given within the team and the leadership group to to enable that to happen. Um, and also, it was about who needed it. It wasn't about um, oh, everyone needs John to get involved in in what they're doing. And, and I just found that um, different people um, different strokes. Um, so James had a, a bunch of people he was, he was looking after that, that they really felt comfortable in working with James. Bree had a lot of people that she was looking after um, and Mel. And it was just a thing that we worked through um, and everyone's motivators, you know, what, what, what drives them, what, what, what's actually driving the whole uh, purpose that they have. That really needed a lot of nuance and a lot of investigation to understand. Um, and again, it just simply came down to that classic confidence. You had that earlier on. You get that confidence not only you get it in your team because your team's your number one customer. Um, yeah. You can then transfer that confidence into Mars. Yeah, guys, can I just do a quick check? Can I get a thumbs up? You're hearing you're hearing John okay? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of little dropouts for me. But could you just uh, uh, or just pop it into into chat uh, uh, along those lines. John, the other thing I like is that is that what you've just spoken about is looking at the individual uh, team members. It was very much around, okay, uh, what dialogue do you need? What um, strategy might you need to upgrade? What might you need to put in place here? And then either providing it or working with them to be able to, to put that into, into play. Um, and yeah, okay, I'm getting it cutting in and out a little bit. All right, we'll just see, um, but not too bad. Okay, thanks. Um, so, so I'm getting a bit of you cutting in it as well. So, yeah. <laughs> What's that? I'm getting a little bit of you cutting in it out as well. So I'm not sure right. where it okay. is. Um, let's see. Let's see how we we're, we're going with it, guys. So I, I think we're we're still getting the essence, which is uh, uh, which is awesome. Did you have you changed any market communications in this in this process as well? Very much. Um, you know, the, the marketing department was one of the first things we looked at and said, oh, how's it, you know, what's our marketing department look like during this time? You know, we're, 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 it's, we're not going to be marketing properties the same way. We're still that. So that was a very early sort of decision. It was like, okay, this is an opportunity to, to go out to our marketplace. The local papers shut. 
um, there was a, a, a new opportunity, particularly in the social environment, to, to uh, get out to the marketplace um, a, a different type of message. So it was the, we, we talked a lot about safe, uh, safety side, side of things and our care component. Um, then we started building in the value components. So the value components were, um, you know, where we are your, to our clients, we are your most valuable asset. In other words, that's the, the role that we play uh, to you. Uh, so the messaging was very much a, a, a confidence message. It was a, that we are doing business. Um, this is how we're doing business. Uh, and, and the messaging is still going out that way. And it's really interesting, and particularly when you can do those on, on Insta stories and Facebook stories to actually build a, a really good message out to the marketplace. Um, and because uh, what, what I love about the business that we're in is that we are not the keepers of information, of information. We provide the information to the marketplace. We add up to the marketplace. And we're dealing with people who are, in, in the most part, very, very inexperienced in what they do. They only do this once every 10 to 15 years, um, or if they're an investor, they might once every five, or whatever, it's, it's a small amount of time. So they are going into the great unknown in a normal situation. So any um, uh, consumer, real estate consumer going into, during COVID-19 was going into the greatest unknown they've ever seen in real estate. Because all they had was media barraging of doom and gloom. Um, we had to navigate, which is such a great word, them through that in, in giving them the confidence and the certainty that, that we at least know what we're doing. Um, and I think that was such an important thing for us to, to, to get through. Uh, and so I, I would do a, a video out to our, our database uh, every week of, of just, again, making sure everyone understood what's going on. Uh, and the same to the team, lots of video content um, to make sure that they, they feel confident. And that's the messages we were getting back from the team is that thanks to the leadership group, you, you're making it really good. We, we, we love the information. We love the fact that we, we've, we've got the knowledge. And then from the consumers coming back again, thank you so much. The information has been awesome. Um, it, it's, it's sort of like a sensible hand guiding us through this, this journey. There's so many interesting feedback like that. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Now, guys, it is dropping out a little bit for me uh, with this. John, do you have a secondary Wi-Fi at your end at all? I've got full Wi-Fi, yeah. You, you, you have? Okay, let's... Um, uh, it, it, it could be me. It could be me. So, so uh, let's just move on from the point of view that that was very much the approach and sort of the, the, the responding... Um, you know, you're, you're sort of coming out of this, we're, we're hopefully coming out of this now into a different kind of a, a mode. Could you talk a little bit about what, uh, uh, what are some of the changes? And if you like, I've also uh, have got, thanks to, to Bree, your, um, your May plan, which um, I, I, would you like to talk through that now or? or... Sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the basis of what, what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Why don't I, I bring that up? Because I, I think this um this has got uh, uh awesome power attached to it so you should be seeing uh that yep. may plan now yeah so i'll just go through that i mean the idea with this was to um uh, and it came off the back of a session we did with you michael um just talking about how you communicate with your team um you know what the plan is because there's got to be a plan um and so you know the the april plan was a little bit sort of put together and it was like okay this is um this is you know our our, uh, our program that we're going to get everyone into adaptation mode. And, and um, you know, that was the, the key to, uh, to April was adaptation. Like, how do we adapt to this? What do we, what do we know? And that was the core to it all. So when we came into May, it was, it was automation, accountability and action. So automation was making sure that this was an opportunity with all the, all the tech um, elements that we we're bringing into play, that they don't slow down. They actually get sped up. Um, so, you know, bringing on a real-time agent, um, up, up, upskilling everyone on our property in PM and then the sales with real-time agent, we became a high priority because that was an opportunity when change comes along, you've got a decision with change to actually go with the change that's forced upon you or create the change that you want. Um, and so we decided to take, take the, the second, which is uh, create the change that we want. Um, so it was an opportunity. Uh, and again, anything like this is just has to be seen as an opportunity. So we saw opportunity for um, six key areas of our business. These are the six key focuses for our, for our business. Um, and so we have, we've therefore brought the theme in to our six core functions for 2020. Um, it was also, also like 
try to plan out for 2020, it was adapt the plan to, to uh, what the situation we're currently in. So team culture, we decided we've got to fund, we've got to make sure this is really um, something that uh, everyone can get in there. So we did a lot of um, social things um, on, uh, on Zoom, on, on Facebook, we had competitions running every week. Uh, last night we did our trivia night, uh, and I'll go into a little bit of detail about that in a minute, about as, as to what the expectations are on that. Um, and the idea with the team culture is to create confidence, clarity and certainty for the team. That was the, the key element of what came out of that. Um, and of course, the work health and safety in our Cunningham's care program uh, that ran, ran through that. Um, so those things had to, to continue, but we had to have fun as the hallmark of, of all of that. Uh, when we look at sales, it was the Thrive to Thrive program um, to keep people motivated, keep them actually accountable um, and, and to make sure that for those that needed it, there was a tool um, to help them with accountability and their disciplines to keep that, that going. Um, and that way, um, and then we've got Cunningham's Concierge, which has been introduced along the way um, with Before You Bid and the, other, uh, and, and the rest of the crew in that, in that space with Agent Box and so on. So those things were, were the, the, the three um, uh, projects that got kick-started into, into that. Property management, this is interesting. Um, property management, uh, legislation, uh, negotiation, communication, they were the, the three key components. We had legislative change taking place. We didn't want to slow down our introduction of, of legislative change. You know, they pushed it out to October to pay. Understand um, what sits in there. Understand exactly every step the government made um, to change the uh, Residential Tenancies Act. We had to be on top of it completely. Um, and then we had to be in full negotiation mode. So negotiation training was, was pretty cool, um, which all links into the communication. Uh, marketing brand, messaging language, that was just such a big uh, thing for us. Um, and I think we've done that exceptionally well. And it really is standing out in the marketplace uh, when, uh, you know, we follow all our competitors to what they're doing. And there's just silence for most. Um, they're going into, into, into recess. Um, so uh, it was an opportunity to review our marketing budgets within the team, um, how we're going to do that. And that's uh, something we'll launch into, uh, into the new financial year. Um, and mapping the customer journey was, was another really important thing customer journey will come out of this very different. Um, so we have to be on top of that and build that into the three layers, which is the, uh, the tech layer, uh, the administration layer, and the, and the agent layer. Um, so that's, that's a big project that, uh, that, that's kicked off into that. And of course, tech and innovation, I mentioned real-time agent, our property, and data. Data is, is such a huge opportunity right now to cleanse, um, and we're doing some work with domain in that space as well, which is quite, quite interesting. Um, so those things had to be ramped up. They all had to be put on steroids to get them moving and to bring change into, into the place. Business, um, financial fitness was a critical component of that, uh, making sure we took all of advantage of all government stimulus and packages that we could, and then really looking at forecasting and investing in our futures. So these are things that didn't drop off. Um, everything had to keep going, but at a, actually at a more rapid rate. Um, so we've, we've now um, created our plan for June. Um, and this is, this, the team is, is aware of all, this is something that stays in a cupboard. Uh, this, is, this is, the team understand this and we report to the team. This week, in a um, system where you can't stay still, you have to be even more progressive and more forward thinking than, than before this happened. So John, I'll just I'll just uh, uh, end the, uh, the the share on that. Uh, a, a couple of things that I love about this. Number one, uh, you've made the plan look groovy. So you brought it into uh, you know in, into 2020. So here it is. Here's our plan for for May. I'm imagining that is presented to the team. Correct. Yep, that's presented. And that sort of format also. Those graphics are a lot of what we do in social uh, as well. Yes. For what we call information graphics for. For, for, our, um, for our consumers. And so there's a little point here, guys, just in case you, you haven't noticed it, and that is to have your internal communication aligned to the external. So often I see internally, like, oh, here is a, a daggy document. I'll call it a daggy document internally, but we want to have this perception out external. Hang on. If your team are, are, are part of your client network uh, and, you know, they're volunteering every day to come and be part of the, the Cunningham's brand, let's make them feel special with this. And as simple as this is, I think it's a, a really strong message that's building some, uh, some amazing momentum uh, along those lines. Uh, fantastic. 
So, so you know, there's a, there's a quick win with this. By the way, what I will say, John, is given, um, and, and Brie, I'm going to name, uh, name you in this process, given Brie and the, the development of the leadership team that's happened over the last really five years, um, you know, the ability for you to put a lot through uh, and put a lot into the Cunningham's plan is pretty significant with this. Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely, and and it's it's we're we're really in a great place when we look at at, at how marketing um, uh, how the, it connects everything. It's almost like now marketing sits in the middle of everything, um, and it's it's um, it's such a a, a dynamic uh, bunch of people there that are really understanding what we want to achieve, and and we're given so much freedom now. Um, so they understand the brand, understanding what it's about, and understanding particularly being all involved in the in the development of the of the brand progression. Uh, into where it is today. Um, we're just really loving the creativity that comes back and the interaction with the, within the team. And it's funny because we've actually now got, um, obviously when we move around a bit within our three offices. Yeah. So- and uh, The offices now are creating that space and we can all start getting back together again. Yeah. So John, uh, you, you just uh, did a little bit of a, uh, a jump out then. What I will say is for some of you who are, who are tuned in, when you have a, uh, a, a partner network, and John, we might do another one talking about the, the learnings of bring, coming on board as the, the partner network. And uh, the reason is I'd, I'd like the quality of the, uh, the recording to be just a little bit better than what it is right, uh, uh, right now. What I do want to just sort of stress to you is if you look at this and say, wow, that's an impressive plan, but if you don't have the resources to action that plan, what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for fail, to fail. You know, John and, and you know the, the, the Cunningham's team has the ability to deliver on that, to test these things, to put these things in play. Um, my, my caution would be that you know, less things done better will always outperform a lot of things done poorly. So just be aware of that from the point of view that if you look at this and say, wow, that's a great plan, but hang on, I don't have the resources to implement it. It's not a great plan for you. It's got to be aligned to where you're at. So, uh, you know, I'm big on five key projects, but if five's too many, do four. If four's too many, do three, but at least do three projects that will start to advance and move the business forward. What I love about this, John, is, you know, back to that eye on the future, by you investing in these and the team knowing about them, it means... Uh, as a leader, we're thinking beyond this. We're thinking past this. We're thinking about how do we actually add value uh, on an ongoing basis. So rather than getting caught in it, and I think a lot of caught in it, as opposed to let's actually help you see a, a longer view and a bigger view further out from this. Absolutely. I mean, it's um, it, it is about it is about resources. It is about um, having that that vision down the line. Then it's breaking it down into its parts. Um, so you know we've. We've always had too many projects on the go. Um, this is probably the first year where we've, in my view, that we've probably got them running at the right level. Um, and again, you know, there's different projects for different departments if you're in that way. And I remember back, you know, before we had this, um, it's funny, when you're small, you can be more nibble and get more things done. Uh, there's an in-between period where it's all a bit sort of chaotic where you're in the, as we learned yesterday in the in, in session. Um, the uh, leadership session, um, there can be a chaotic space in there. Um, and you come out the other end where you're more mature business, you actually can take a different view on what works growth wise and what, what doesn't. Um, and another thing, again, learnings that come out of this are, are, are so many. Um, you know, I mentioned about the team um, activities, you know, it's like not every activity is for everyone. We used to think, oh, we're going to have a bowling night, everyone has to be there. No, they don't. Um, there's some people who are going to like bowling and then say some people don't. there's some people who like trivia and there's some people that don't there's some people who like to clean up beaches and there's some people who who don't can i just talk can i just talk on that particular um, point so all those john, things are... john john just jumping in on that particular point um one of the things that i've seen happen is someone doesn't go and do the beach clean up and we look at them and say oh you're not part of the team you're not you're not a team player or something along those lines so there's almost, we, we overlay some guilt to them as opposed to, no, 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 people, people operate differently and they, they need and want different things at different points in time. Uh, this is a really cool learning. Um, 
what what are some of the the, the either the team fund things or the or and I, I love the fact you've integrated it to Cunningham's care. The the C words are, work so well for you guys. Um, is there anything that you've done that you're going to keep going around that that care and fun factor side of things with the team? Yeah, look, absolutely. I mean, the the beach cleanup thing is one that we we. Um, we're seriously looking at as to how we do that on a monthly basis. We, we, we did one at the beginning of the month, we're doing another one tomorrow. Um, and um, so again, you, we're conscious and, and, and I'm um, the first one to think, oh, opportunity, great, let's, let's do this, everyone's going to be involved. Um, but I have, to, I have to sort of pull the reins back and, and I've got plenty of people to do that on me, fortunately, um, that uh, will go, hey, okay, what's real? what's realistic here what, what and who's going to be involved who's going to get into this thing um and you know we, we've got georgie in the team for example who's just ideas about what we can do the community da, 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 a million of them and we've got to again rein that in to go okay let's see let's focus on this element and do this really well um and so for us there will be a whole lot of those sort of things and because we've always been a thing that if we're going to do the, the community care program <coughs> we have to make sure there's participation. You can't do anything without participation or involvement. It's not just a matter of throwing money at something. You have to be there. Um, it has no value otherwise. Um, so there's, and again, with, when we look at the team things, there will be continuation of things that we've done. Uh, every week we've done a, a, a Facebook thing. Last week it was baby photos. Everyone had to win a baby photo competition. Um, and I think there was 34, three or four people who put submitted their, their photos. Uh, and it was great. You know, we, you're never going to get 100%. Again, that appealed to half the team. We did trivia last night. There was about 15, 16 people on that. So that's a, a quarter of the team that, that appealed to them. Um, and we've done um, a whole lot of competitions. We did a fitness competition. We did a creative competition. And different people do different things. So what will come out of this is that we'll continue that going with the expectation that will interest some people and not others. Um, yeah. And so the fun elements um, bring different people together. Like last night's trivia, we found out one of our, our crew is an absolute music aficionado and he blitzed the, the, um, the, the, the trivia last night, um, came up with things that you think, wow, you know, <laughs> where did that come from? Um, so, you know, and again, people are, are lining up with different things. So I think it's that, you are building culture um, through these things and you're, you're building connection with, with people within the team. By the way, by the way, John, just to reinforce uh, how creative Georgie is around, you know, ideas and so on. She sent me a video that she hired a street performer who was out of work, uh, put them onto a, a unicycle with a unicorn, you know, uh, kind of thing and, and went around the streets of, uh, of, um, Seaforth and so on, her marketplace, which, by the way, the kids love. You could see these kids that are like, oh, my gosh, what, what, is, what on earth is happening? There is a unicorn going along the street. She saw him, she saw him perform. He was going on the beachfront. And she ran out and said to him, hey, and he found he was from America. He, um, he uh, sorry, dog doorbell. <laughs> um, and she approached hey, do you want to come up and do that? He was actually flying out the next day to go back home to the States. And so she paid him some cash and he came up with his, because that was how he was all dressed. That was his whole thing. And so, yeah, that, that's exactly right. And, you know, when you see, see again, see opportunity. Uh, you think of the invalu that went around all the streets of Fairlight Manly, where, which is her patch. The impact of that, what, what an investment. It cost her 500 bucks and, you know, uh, everyone talked about it. Yeah. Georgie, Georgie Bates from Cunningham's did that. Yeah, she's one of the, 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 the smartest about creating a, a point of difference and cut through in her marketplace that is so her. You know, yeah. there's, there's, you occasionally see people who go, oh, I'll take this idea and put this in place. But it's not you. You know, it doesn't fit your style. That's so, the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. got to be you. I mean, the authenticity of these things, people, it's a great word that's thrown around in, in this industry, but authenticity is knowing who you are. Um, until you know who you are, um, you can't express that and people know you for who you are rather than who you th think you are <laughs> yeah. or the facade yeah. that you that you put up, you know, the surface rather than the, the uh, under the surface. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. 
Um, so guys, we, what we won't do is we won't head down and sort of uh, tell us about your partner, the partner model and, and, and so on, because I think we'll just stick on, on this particular uh, point. Guys, any questions that you have for, for either myself or for, for John, this has been incredibly beneficial, John. And, and I think one of the things that, that you, know, you know I love about, uh, about you working with the, the Cunningham's team is that level of direction and uh, you know, as, an, as an implementer, uh, and an implementation team, you guys do implement extraordinarily well. So you'll come up with a concept. Maybe there's a few too many ideas floating around, but that that filtration process that you're that I think you've really got you guys have really perfected now to come down and say let's lock and load this, let's lock and load this, or at least let's test this. Did it work? Yes, no, maybe. If it worked, well, let's keep it in place for the long term, or let's actually give it a you know give it the flick. Um, and I think this is one of the things that we sometimes think we need to keep everything we've got, whereas you, you, you've done a really good job of saying, okay, do we still need this? Is this still valid? And, you know, there's that great book, if it ain't broke, break it. You know, the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, you guys are doing a great job of, let me break this, let me break this and see where we can go to from here. Well, so, I think in this day and age where, the, where there's so many things thrown at us that, that are, are the, you know, the silver bullet, the secret to, um, to your success, and it's working your way through that. So having an implementation team uh, with, with Kelly leading that really has made a big difference um, that, you know, Brie and Kelly can really analyze something once the investigation has been done and say, hey, does this fit? Um, and it's always that question, is this going to create more opportunity? Or is it just another piece of tech to bolt onto something that we think or a communication channel that will make a difference? And as we all know, the reality is nothing, nothing replaces face-to-face -face or telephone communication. Right. You can throw all these other bits and pieces to get different bits of information out and all that sort of stuff. Unless there's connection, unless there's, um, unless there's relevance in the information, unless there's connection in, in the actual people want to open this thing up, unless there's a relationship that actually has meaning, uh, it's all just bits of information flying around that sounds great and the tech guys can make it sound brilliant and, the, and the, you know, the, the, that IT world can, can bamboozle you. But until you actually go in and say, will this make a difference? Um, will this help the team actually find more opportunities? Will this help them generate more? Will this help them prospect? Um, will this help them in their relationships? Um, the reality is nothing will replace that phone call or that, uh, or that knock on the door or say hello. And, and I love what you're saying here. There's, there's, there's two important points. I think um, doing it for the sake of doing it, why bother? Doing it because it has an impact and it will actually either um, build profile, create stronger relationships, position you in a particular way, um, help build momentum and, and, and so on. So what's the impact? So I think one of the most important things that, that, that you guys do naturally, not, I'm not sure if you're even aware that you, you guys do it, you, you'll look at something and go, how does this have impact? What's the impact it will actually have uh, from a client point of view, from a team point of view, from an efficiency, from a profitability point of view? And as soon as you get some clarity on that, you can say, well, okay, this is worthwhile investing in or not. Uh, from that point of view. Um, yeah, look, I think that, that leads on to that whole impression that things are, are left. You know, you, you think, and particularly today with social, it's so easy to throw things out there, but there's an impression left with everything you throw out, right? Is, is it a, a good impression? Is it a bad impression? Is it an ambivalent impression? Which one, you know, have you actually thought about that? Um, because that's the impact. It's one of those three things. So, Therefore, uh, to have a positive impact, you know, you, you really have to be very thoughtful in, in what you do. Um, it's, it's the same as a, you know, a care call, you know, it, it's, um, it's, you know, listening to James Hosselman the other day, it's really critical in terms of the, of the, of the way that you can actually have a conversation with, with people um, to actually have them go, oh, you actually do care about me. You're, you're not actually after anything. Now, the reality is you are, uh, you're after relationship and connection because that, that leads to business. Um, as long as you understand that and, and that's the impression that's been left, um, you can have a conversation that, that asks nothing about their real estate needs whatsoever, but you've, you've made a lasting impression. Absolutely. And I think, John, you know, our agent coaching model has shifted away from how many calls are you making to how many connected conversations did you have? And too often it's like, you know, how many people did you dial? How many people did you, did you, did you call? that's not that important. What's important is how many connected conversations did you have? And out of those connected conversations, were, was it a care call or was it a value call? 
and you know which of those two were you were you investing in? If I haven't spoken to a John Cunningham for a while, it better be a care call. You know, it better be a check-in call. If if we've had the care conversation, well, now the next conversation better have some value in it because I care, I care, I care. Well, okay, good. I, I get that you care. Thank you very much. Um, but you know, is there some value? And you know, one of the things I know that that you do, both from a sales and a property management point of view, is do some brainstorming with the team as to what are the valid reasons, what are the things that that we can actually tip into the conversation with our our, our clients that will actually give them, you know, more of that more of that confidence, clarity, and certainty that we've got with the team, but also transfer that through to clients. Absolutely. I mean, it's again, that's been the the, the really important part of of what we've gone through in in terms of. Not, I wouldn't call it, I'm not a big fan of dialogues. It's actually um, having a purpose in the call. You know, what's that purpose look like? Um, because every single person you talk to is going to be a different type of conversation. So determine the purpose and determine the desired outcome. Um, if you do that, off you go. It's, uh, it's making sure that there are the elements in there that resonate with them. Because uh, at the end of the day, you, you've got to come out of that relevant to the person that you spoke to, right? If, there's, if there does, that doesn't happen, um, there was no purpose in the call. And, and, and if we come out without relevance, the next time you go to ring that person, well, do, we really, do I really want to pick up this call? Do I really want to actually connect and, and spend time on this? Answer's yeah. no, and away we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, guys, any questions that you've got for, uh, for John as we, uh, as we wrap this? This has been you know, incredibly insightful and, and I think beneficial for for you guys and look i think the the purpose of navigate for me is to hear from colleagues uh, and people within the real estate profession who are doing great things in the marketplace to help you navigate and it's not about you necessarily taking everything that, that john's just been through but what is the one two or three things that resonate with you that fit the style of your agency fits your style of leadership that you can actually bring on board and move forward with uh, as we're, we're just waiting for any questions to come through, John, one of the things, I, and I know I've, I've, I've coached this in with you guys, is the Disney creativity strategy. And that is uh, the dreamer, the achiever, the challenger. And I think one of the most impressive things that has happened is you've, ex you've had an expanded leadership team and an expanded ownership team of the business is you've got this amazing balance of dreamer, achiever and challenger. And a lot of the time people think a challenger is being negative. In actual fact, a challenger is probably going to help you build the quality of your plan. And I just think the, the, the mix that you've created um, uh, knowingly or not knowingly, but the, but the outcome that's occurred there is, is this, uh, this, this a wonderful kind of um, um, mix of talent that allows the business to, to, to move forward, which is, uh, which well, is great. Yeah, I and mean, you would have seen it when we did a disc profiling last year of the, of the leadership team. And um, I think it, it, if you get any group that gets together, um, and because we have a group that spans not just sales, um, it's, uh, sales makes up only half of our, of our, of our partnership. Um, uh, it's property management, it's, it's operations, it's financial control, it's, it's management. Um, that is going to create a, a different dynamic Anyway, so you are going to get those three profiles in there without any doubt in when you get 11 people in that, in that space. And to me, that's its key. If, if you want a, a, a dynamic business, and it's like a, a, you know, if you're going to create a board, you want a board that's diverse. You don't want a board that's, um, that's all going to be yes men. Um, it's like every time Donald Trump gets someone that's, that questions him, they're fired. You know, he just wants all, all yes men and yes women, and they have to be particularly of a type that suits his, his, um, his needs. That's not the way that you progress in a business. Um, it's, it's too narrow. It's, um, so for us, yes, absolutely. Having the challenges, having the dreamers, um, you, you, you've got to have the two ends of the spectrum and, and then most people sit in the middle there. Um, you know, some people, I can dream big um, and it's, it's incredible to have the others to actually make, because you can, you can, you can dream and, and they're going to sit outside reality. Um, uh, the challenger will, will bring everyone back to a space where you can not just be realistic about other things, but challenging can also be challenge the dream, even to be dream greater. Um, so it's, it's diverse. It's critical. I, 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 again, don't have all the same people with me. It, it, it's, it's a very boring journey. So, John, um, uh, moving forward, if there was one piece of advice that you could give all the leaders 
that you, you, you've learned in your you know, 40 plus years of, of real estate and leadership and learning, what would be the one piece of advice that you'd, you'd share? Right now, seize the opportunity. But seize the opportunity in, um, in, in thinking big. Um, what are the big means to you? Whether that means big changes, um, whether that means growth, whatever it is, doesn't, doesn't matter. But, but think big, think outside the box. Challenge yourself to, to um, now take advantage and create the change that you want. Or find out what, more importantly, the change the consumer wants. Um, once you determine that, that determines the business model moving forward. Now, of course, the consumers want certain things. We know how to adapt that into a, into a, a realistic space that says, okay, this is how we fit. And I think the key is, remember, our future is being at the centre of the transaction. But it's beyond that. It's actually been at the centre of the customer journey um, through life. So again, our uh, finding joy in your real estate journey concept um, and a life you love to live, that is a long time, um, long term play. Um, so we have to be at the centre of that, uh, that journey for people and, and be a critical part, an essential part um, of that. And we are the linchpin to their whole real estate um, environment. Uh, and I think that's where we can really, really lift our game um, into that space uh, to, uh, to actually make that, um, make that a reality. Yeah, fantastic. Well, you know, one of my, my favourite saying is a business will never outperform its, its leaders and its leadership team. And just congratulations, John, on, on the energy, the effort and the commitment you're putting into it. Can we give uh, John a, a, a thumbs up digitally, guys, or a, a round of applause uh, along those lines. Thank you, thank you so much, John, and uh, uh, wish you well. It'd be great to reconnect in, in a couple months' time and just get a, a sense of, of how things are, are progressing and what additional learnings have actually come out of it for you and the, and the Cunningham's team. Sounds great, Michael, and good luck with that audio. Hopefully, it, um, uh, it will come out okay. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it will. Thanks, guys. Yeah.